Hey everyone, my name is Antoinette Staples and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If this is your first week tuning in, I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so happy that you joined today. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button before you leave. If you are returning and you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting on? Make sure you subscribe too. Um, and so I want to thank you all for checking out my channel this week. I pray that this video is a blessing to you. So what am I talking about this week? Well, this week I'm talking about, or should I say the subject is help, help me Lord. I have commitment issues. Anybody know what I'm talking about? So this week we're talking about Lord help. I have commitment issues. And I thought this was a, a good subject, uh, just some different things that I've been seeing in social media, my timelines. And um, so it kind of just prompted me to write a message about this. So I have commitment issues. How do you know if you have commitment issues? Well, you probably have commitment issues if you often run from things when they get difficult. If you jump from relationship to relationship um, because it's not working out or the person isn't doing things the way you want them to and you're quick to, you probably have commitment issues, okay? Um, if stuff doesn't look like you want it to or you feel like this isn't what I totally signed up for, so you bail, you probably have commitment issues. The reality is, is that a lot of things we do um, in this walk with God and just in life in general, sometimes it's going to get tough and you can't run every time something gets a little tough. You can't go find something different or start a new task or just say, oh, something must be wrong with this because it's not working out like our plan. You have to stick through some things and be um, be dedicated to some things. And so commitment all right. What is it? What does that look like? So when you look at the definition, um, and y'all excuse my voice, I've been kind of sick. So I'm going to be drinking some water throughout this video. Um, commitment is the state or quality of being dedicated to a cause or activity. The second definition says this, an engagement or um, an engagement that restricts freedom or action An engagement that restricts freedom or action. And then some of the words it gives is responsibility or duty. When you have a commitment to something, it's your responsibility. It's your duty. It restricts you from going off and doing whatever it is that you want to do because you are committed. And so, excuse me. And so if you are really struggling in that and you always find yourself freeing yourself up, you don't like the way something looks, you don't like the way it feels and you freeing yourself up, then you don't feel um, accountable to anything. You don't feel responsible or obligated to anything. And you have commitment issues. The good thing is that the first step is acknowledgement. So if you have commitment issues and you know you have commitment issues, can you ask the Lord, Lord, help? I have commitment issues. I need you to help a sister out. I need you to help a brother out because um, I know I have some guys watching my video. So you have commitment issues. You don't stick things through. You'll never see things happen in the end. Um, and so what does that look like when we talk about that? You know, I read a short story um, and it's one of my favorite authors. And so he talks about how when he was a little boy, he played baseball and he this particular summer had um, was known for having the most strikeouts out of anyone in his little league. He was the batter, though, not the pitcher, not the pitcher. And so he had the most strikeouts out of anyone in his league. And so his teammates moan and groan when they see him get up to the plate. But the other teams would cheer and applaud because they knew he was going to strike out. But every week, no matter what, his parents always came to the game. They were his number one fan and they cheered him on in the stands. They didn't give up on him or tell him to quit. They didn't say any of that. They kept on supporting him and they helped him to see you see it through to the end. They taught him a valuable lesson in commitment. Sometimes you're going to get up to that plate and you don't have any control what's going to be thrown your way. And ultimately, regardless of what is thrown at you, you still show up and you still are present and you still give it everything you have, everything you have, everything in your power with that swing. And so that's what he did week after week. 
practice after practice, he showed up and his parents showed up and they cheered him on and they believed that he could do it. And so they showed him if you're committed and you're dedicated, eventually you will improve. Now that's that season. He didn't do so well, but he came back in the next season. He was just as committed and just as dedicated and he kept improving year after year. So what does that mean? That means sometimes life is going to throw some curveballs at you. It's going to throw some, throw some things your way and you're going to completely strike out. But every day you have to decide, I'm going to show up to the plate and I'm going to bat and I'm going to give this thing everything that I have. And so what are some things that we commit to in life? Well, relationships, right? I saw some things on my social media timeline. There are so many women trying to coach women on how to have the right man and how to have the perfect relationship. And the reality is, is that sometimes with even with all these tools and all these resources on how to get a man, oftentimes once we get the man, we don't know how to keep him because we aren't committed. And why aren't we committed? Why is it that you jump from job to job and you haven't really um, settled into a career? Why is it that you jump from business partner to business partner and you haven't been able to settle in on a relationship that will return any profit? A lot of times it's not the outside um, things. It's sometimes what's on the inside of us. Now, if you think about it, some of us have decided that we're not going to show up to the plate and we're not going to give it everything that we have. We think of situations as it's your fault, not mine. And so there's nothing wrong with me. There's something wrong with you. And the way to resolve this situation is that I need to leave it instead of I need to work at it and give it everything that I have. I need to become dedicated and I need to put my heart into it. And so we have commitment issues. We have commitment issues because we don't commit to relationships. We won't commit to doing the work to make things last. And we don't have our heart in any situation. So when you look in the scriptures in this is in first Chronicles verses 28. I mean, excuse me, first Chronicles 28, nine and 10. Let me read the scripture to you. It says, as for you, my son, Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and with a willing mind for the Lord searches all hearts and understands all the intent of your thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you forever. He will cast you out forever. Consider now for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And then I want to skip over to verse 20 and it says, and David said to his son, Solomon, be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed for the Lord God, my God will be with you. Now, I love this scripture, um, these two scriptures, because here it is. David wanted to build the house, but he was not chosen to do so. It was Solomon who was chosen. I apologize. I know it's so rude, but I'm about to go into a coffin pit. So here it is. David wanted to build the house, but the Lord told him, no, it is your son Solomon who will build it. And so he's telling Solomon here, he says, with a loyal heart and a willing mind. Some of us are not committed because our hearts aren't loyal. You know, there's a song, it's a secular song, and it says, you know, these people aren't loyal to you. I don't like the terminology that they use in the song, but he makes a very good point. People aren't loyal. Your heart isn't loyal. You're not committed because your heart isn't loyal and your mind isn't willing. I like to think that commitment starts with both of those. So it starts with first your mindset and then it goes to becoming a matter of the heart. So ultimately you have to make up in your mind. I understand the goal. I understand the plan. I'm focused on whatever that is. And my heart is loyal. My heart is committed. I'm dedicated to whatever it is, but I understand that I've been chosen. And so in verse 10, he goes on to say, be strong and do it. Why does he say be strong and do it? The reality is, is that you're going to get tired sometimes. Sometimes you're going to want to quit and you're going to want to say, I cannot do this. But in the scripture, he's telling Solomon, be strong 
and do this. Be strong and do it. Know that you have been chosen for this. And so when you look at it and you look at um, just where we are in our relationships and I kind of wrote this out, you know, we're talking about these people, you know, with these videos and tools, how to get the perfect man, how to get that man, girl, how do you find the man that the Lord has for you? How do you identify your Boaz or whatever it is they want to talk about? And so the reality is, is that our mind is set on finding the man. But what's the goal after that? Once you get the man, what's next? Right. I want Lord, I want a relationship. Well, I mean, what does that look like for you? What's the goal? What are you working towards? What are you going to be committing to? What is your mind going to be willing in? What is your heart going to be loyal for? Is it just to get a relationship? Because if that's it, you're going to jump from relationship to relationship. And I know this speaks to someone because you can think about yourself over this past year and you've jumped from relationship to relationship and they keep failing because you aren't committed. It's a heart issue. It's a mind issue. Right. And so what is the Lord saying to you in these different situations? You know, and so. Ultimately, not Lord, I want a relationship. Lord, I'm looking for a husband. And so I'm not going to jump from relationship to relationship. I'm waiting on you, Lord. So when you tell me who this man is, when it gets too difficult, I'm going to remember that you said in your word, you've chosen me for this assignment. I believe marriage is a God assignment. So you've chosen me for this assignment. I'm going to be strong and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it with a loyal heart and a willing mind. Think about that. Think about it also in terms of the person who's working out. When you set yourself up with fitness goals, you watch all these people on Instagram, you put the things up on your wall, you've got your goal for your waistline, your pounds, how many you pounds you want to lose for the ladies you've got that dress you want to fit into whatever it is you've got it in the forefront of your mind because you have a goal that you are working towards sometimes when I used to work out and go to the gym y'all need to go back to the gym get a little committed I'm I got commitment issues Lord with that gym I have to pay that membership every month and I don't go but anyways so when I would go though um, and I would sit out in the parking lot sometimes and I would have to talk myself into it. And I would just say, oh, Lord, can you just get me out of the car? If you just get me inside, I know I can do it. The hardest part was getting out of the car because I knew I'd be hurting afterwards. I knew it would kind of suck during, but I knew it was so, so worth it in the end because I had a goal in mind. And it's the same way with anyone else. If you have fitness goal, you think about that with your meal prep. You're planning towards something. You think about that with the exercise and the regimen that you have in place. So you think about all these things, excuse me. And so you're saying to, to yourself, I have a goal in mind. There's something that I'm working towards and I have to be committed even when it's uncomfortable, even when I don't want to do it. I got to put it in front of me. I know this is going to hurt. I know sometimes it's not pleasant, but man, that goal look, it's, it's, it's right there. I can see it. It's tangible. I'm almost there. Look at how my pants are fitting. Look at how this dress is fitting. Oh, look at that waistline trimming down, right? And it's the same way when you talk about relationships or business endeavors, when you say to yourself, Lord, this is it's a bad place right now. We're not in that honeymoon phase. Lord, I'm kind of not liking him and he probably don't like me too much. But what's the goal here? What is it that we've committed to? We've committed to this thing and we say we know long term what it is that we're working towards. We know what it is that we sought the Lord for. And we understand that this is an assignment that we've been chosen for. Where are my purpose walkers? My people who say I'm walking in purpose. I know what it is that the Lord has chosen me to do. And so because of that, I am committed. How committed are you? Are you only committed when it's easy? Are you only committed when things are co convenient for you? Are you only committed when everything seems to be lining up? Well, the reality is, is that's not always going to be the case. There are going to be some difficult times throughout your journey. And you've got to walk that thing out. You've got to be strong and do it. And as he says in verse 20, he said, be strong and of good courage and do it. Know that the Lord will not leave you. He will not forsake you. When we look in scripture in Galatians 6 and 9, it says, do not grow weary in well doing for you shall reap in due season if you think not. Love that scripture. Love that. So, um, in the previous verses, it says, if you um, God will not be mocked. 
Whatever you re whatever you sow, you will reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap. And I love that. And I thought that was so relevant in terms of commitment. Let me see if I can make this more plain. When um, you go to the bank and you deposit $100, the reality is, is that you have $100 to withdraw. But if you haven't made any deposits, you don't have any money to withdraw. As a matter of fact, you'll have insufficient funds. All right. And so you'll get some fees attached to that. And so you end up owing some money. Right. And so the reality is, is that a lot of us haven't. Um, reaped anything. We haven't reaped anything from our relationships. We haven't reaped anything when pursuing our purpose. We haven't reaped anything in terms of business because we haven't sown anything and we haven't sown because we're not truly committed. And when you get committed, you'll begin to sow, you'll begin to invest because I like to think of a seed as an investment and you'll start investing in your relationships. You'll start doing the work because you understand it's a bigger goal in mind. So in order for us to truly commit, we're saying, Lord, I understand the bigger picture. I understand the goal that I'm working towards. But any big goal, there are smaller goals and smaller assignments that you have to complete and tasks that you have to finish in order to get to that larger goal, in order for that thing to manifest and to take place. You've got to be willing to do the work in the stages and the steps to get to that point. And so it's the same way with anything else in life. If you understand the goal and what it is that you're working towards when you commit to doing the work, you can get there. Not willing to do the work, you won't get there. So when you say, Lord, help me, I've got commitment issues. Have you identified what the larger goal is? Have you even acknowledged the fact that you aren't committed? And if you understand that you're not committed, then say, Lord, give me the heart for this thing. And if it isn't the thing that I'm supposed to be committed to, then show me what it is that I am committed to. Understanding some assignments you're chosen for, your purpose you're chosen for, that's that marriage that you're in, that's your God given assignment. And you have a responsibility. That's what commitment is. You have a responsibility to do the work, to invest, to make that thing work in terms of your business. When you say you put your name on it, you brand it, you have a commitment and a responsibility to do the work, to see the return on your investment. But if you don't invest anything, there won't be any return. Do you have commitment issues? Well, I want to pray with you. Most gracious and heavenly father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for leading us, Lord. We thank you for guiding us. Lord, we thank you for helping us to acknowledge if we have commitment issues. Father, we pray that you would just um, help us in those areas. Give us um, a loyal heart and a willing mind. Show us the places where you have chosen us, selected us, given us the assignment, and then give us the diligence, the dedication, Heavenly Father, and the endurance, Lord God, for what we need for that individual task or assignment that we would see it through to the end. Help us not to grow weary in well-doing, but help us to trust and believe that you'll never leave us nor forsake us. We thank Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives and it's in your son Jesus name we pray and ask it all I want to thank you so much for watching um, I pray that this video was a blessing to you um, and if you are not following our ministry the ministry God has entrusted me with you can check it out at www.wings.org that's w-e-n-g-s.org um, we will be walking with the sisters network on April the 8th we'd love it if you would join us um, they have this annual breast cancer walk every year um, we set up a team on last year we'll be doing that again this year trying to raise money Money to support the cause so we hope you will join us ladies and gentlemen it is time we all put on our wings and soar